I just got so excited. All right. Good afternoon, afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Tony Pellegrino, and thank you for joining us for another edition of our Tech Talk Live here on Facebook that we do every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, It is an honor that you guys watch the show. I get lots of compliments. People are watching it. They like it. I'm glad. I'm glad we can be of service on this. And uh, my hope is always to inspire people and get them excited about wheeling and off-roading. So um, please go ahead and give us your questions and comments. Today, I've got uh, Debbie, Alex, and Jamie here in the studio to help me out. And uh, remember, as you type in your questions, uh, just make sure you include your, the type of vehicle, model year, um, what, give us a little bit of details about what you're trying to do, and that'll better help me answer the questions. Um, and, you know, this is an open forum, right? So I've got things to talk about, but if you have specific questions, you're watching the show today, fire them away. I'm happy to stop and talk about whatever you have questions about. So uh, this is, the, I love talking about Jeep. So you're, you're talking about my favorite subject. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, oh, featured product. Did we have one on here, Jame, a slide? Is that, oh, our half doors for the JL and the JT. Um, we, some uh, pictures got out on social media this week um, over the last few days of our brand new half doors. Um, they're really nice. If you haven't seen them, I want to tell you a couple things about them. They are almost quarter inch thick aluminum. So they, they sound really solid. They sound like a factory door closing. Um, they've got nice brakes in them and then the rest is curved to match the body really nicely. Um, the, you can use your factory hinges, but we also sell an optional billet hinge and stainless steel hardware um, that you can also keep a set of hinges on the doors. That way you can pull your hard doors, put them off to the side, drop these on, and then quickly drop the hard doors back on. So as long as you've got this, um, I ordered some factory looking mirrors that are non-electric that will mount right here in this location. I can tell you that on my half doors that I'm gonna put on my jail, I'm going to use the Skosh mirrors and just pop a little hole right here on the top and there's a, a like a thumb screw you can put on from the bottom. That's gonna be really cool. We also uh, made it so that our optional armrest will fit on here front and rear. And we also have the JK door bags will mount inside of this as well. So you've got places to put things, maps, water bottles, all kinds of stuff in the door bags. Um, Super nice product. Uh, We are taking pre-orders on these right now and uh, delivery is uh, just a few weeks. So um, get your order in. Be one of the first to get them and uh, you will like them. They are, everybody that has seen them is literally, you know, telling me we've hit it out of the park on this. So, um, yeah, excited to uh, get those out to you guys. Any questions so far? Uh, Yeah, John Jay said he called in today to purchase the JKU half doors. And apparently they're on back order. Well, yeah. they're long back order. Well, they're pre-order. I can tell you that the first batch that I'm making is somewhere between 50 and 100 sets of four. So it's a lot. Um, I know that my salespeople are being very careful about over-promising. Um, I've already told them if you got somebody with their pants on fire, they need to get their butt here and pick them up, okay? Because we still have packaging to nail down. There's still a lot of other things that go with Processes. getting a product shipped. So if you're hot, you need to drive your butt here and pick them up, okay? Uh, when we call and say they're ready. He said he'd be happy to take the Terramoto half doors off. Ah, mind. of course, awesome. <laughs> so um, ob- word. obviously these first uh, two sets, um, that's Alfie's Jeep, he's getting a set, and I've got a set going on my JL um, in the next room over. So, um, and I think we've got a couple updates for you on that as well. So, um, Brett Barnes um, observed that the JL half doors look very similar with the JK doors you have on your site manufactured by Savvy. Did you partner with Savvy for the JK doors as well? Ah, great question. Absolutely not. 
So um, Savvy, for whatever reason, cannot deliver doors. Um, these are 100% from scratch Genrite product. And um, that's part of the reason why they are really, really nice. Um, we have taken the time and really fitted these. They're, they're second to none in terms of quality. Derek Smith asked if the doors line up height-wise with the rest of the tub. Um, you're looking at it right here. So with this all the way back, all the everything matches perfect. Um, we've even got some newer pictures that we took when we put it on the Gladiator that's here yesterday. And uh, I'll be sure to get those posted as well after this broadcast. I'll, I'll get those posted up. Really super nice. So. Summer Ann said she's waiting for the corner guards. Ah, those are also coming. Corner guards, roll cages, guys, everything. I am in high gear now that KOH is over. We are 100% hammering this stuff out. So um, you are going to see a whole bunch of stuff coming out and being available from us right now. So very exciting time. Yep. A lot of work goes in to get us here. So um, these half doors... I've been working on these for five months, so, yep. Uh, perfect, thank you. What else we got? Uh, some funny stuff. Yeah, anybody There's notable? Some curiosity about why the half cut wheel on okay. the table. Uh, let's see, is that what's next? Yes, okay. So I wanted to, I, I went back and looked at the comments um, and questions that we had from last Tuesday, a couple days ago. <clears throat> conversation or tech talk about beadlocks. And um, I realized that if I had something like this, so Jamie and Alex went over and sawed in half a brand new Walker Evans wheel that we had here uh, to best demonstrate this because this really explains what a beadlock does. So you've got the bead of the tire and this is, this is the bead right here, guys. So um, when we were talking about how these come in different thicknesses and whether you needed a beadlock spacer or not, it would go on this side. So the, uh, the bead, as you mount the tire, goes inside here, and then this clamps it on, and that's what keeps the tire from being able to pull off, okay? So in contrast, this is what your tire looks like on a normal rim. It, the air pressure literally just holds it right there, okay? So um, it's, there, there's not much to keep your tire there. Now, this is on the back, right? I'm, I've just flipped it over to show you. But this is what a normal lip looks like on a regular rim, and uh, it would just sit there. In this case, it's flipped over and clamped in here by the beadlock ring. Now, like we talked about, these beadlock rings come in different shapes, sizes, thicknesses. You can see this one, the bolts are not recessed, okay, where the other ones I showed you were thicker and the bolts were recessed. Um, we also talked a little bit about 12-point uh, bolts, and I've, I've got one here, and Alex and I were determined to give you a little bit better picture of what a 12-point looks like. It just looks like the opposite of a socket, right? So um, that way you can see. So this is a regular, you know, grade eight bolt, what we call a hex head. And I'll pull one out to show you. So there's no confusion about that. So hex head and 12 point. All right, so Alex is zooming in to kind of give you a better shot of that. But you know, what, what you'd call a regular bolt and then a 12 point, okay? So um, now, have you got any questions right now, Deb, before I move on? There's a lot of questions. Okay, um, fire away. Okay, let me find it, because I'm just looking at all the questions. Okay. Uh, okay. The first one's probably, uh, why did we saw in half a brand new beadlock wheel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hudson, do you plan a JK door with the same quality? As a matter of fact, I do. Yes. Harrison Keller, can we get a JK Center console to use with the factory dash? Um, maybe, maybe. My, my guys, my list of pro development products for the JL and the JT is long and they're giant projects. 
you're talking about suspension, roll cages, uh, the doors, the corners. You know, there's there's a lot going on right now for JL and JT. That's two different Jeep models. It's a giant undertaking. After all that stuff is done, I'd be happy to go back and revisit, just like we have recently on the YJ and TJ dashes. So, uh, you know, trust me, I've got. 75 ideas of my own without anybody asking for anything else new. And, and trust me, these are exciting ideas of products that you don't even realize you need. Remember, when I came out with a gas tank, nobody even knew they needed one. So I've got 75 more ideas like that, and uh, they're all really cool. So can't, can't wait. There's just not enough hours in a day. I'm only one guy. We just hired a brand new engineer that started today so we're we got a lot going on and we're super excited what else? Uh, billy and candy pollock i have a 2019 jl are there better frames out there for the jl looking to upgrade my axles but want a better frame to bolt them to i'm glad you asked this question did, do we have that slide on here jame it's toward the end it's toward the end okay i'm gonna blip through um just because we got this question right now and i had a similar conversation last night with uh, another gentleman. So this is the brand new JL frame that we have built from scratch, um, but this is designed to be a coil over conversion. So this is what we call the EXS, Elite Extreme Suspension. So this is double triangulated four link rear, three link front. Please do not misunderstand. This was designed as a system, okay? This is not, you can't just put this frame underneath your Jeep and expect to bolt everything back up. You can't use a TerraFlex lift kit. You can't use, you know, it doesn't work like that. This is designed for all our stuff. And uh, it, by the way, it's absolutely way, way, way over the top. Incredible. Um, and we'll have it done uh, very soon. So um, I've, I've got my guys working over the weekends. I mean, we're, we're going to town right now. So uh, very exciting. Um, but yeah, the, the, if you just want a stock frame replacement, no, nothing, nothing yet. All right, what else you got? Uh, Brian Carafa, 03 TJ Wrangler, daily driver, occasional passengers. Behind bench seat is full of spare parts, tools, etc. Yeah. My Optima is dead and considering replacing moving battery back, possibly using a two six volt in series to fit better under seat or more out of the way somewhere. Is anybody doing this? Is it a bad idea? YouTube, I am a YouTube certified electrician. Ah, nice. Okay. Um, you, so you got a couple of things to deal with. One is, when you're moving that, the batteries that far back in the vehicle, um, you've got to consider that you're going to need some like one or zero aught cable, okay? Because to start the battery or run the winch is all the way far away. And you don't want very much voltage drop uh, because there's a high demand for power to start or run the winch. So those are things to consider. Um, today, we're actually going to be talking about uh, dual battery kits that are available and batteries in general to help you guys understand that not all batteries are created equally. Um, again, my, my philosophy is show you guys what we're running. It's what we sell. And the reason is because we've been down the road, we've sifted through all the different brands that are out there and literally picked out the best stuff for you guys. So that's, that's what we're doing. So give me a little bit more. We're, we're getting to that. As you saw, there's a slide coming. And um, if, if nothing else, I can get on after and uh, better answer the question or communicate with you directly. What okay. else you got? Uh, viewer Derek Smith, in relation to this photo, he's saying um, that he, he's noticing that the rear door looks like it's just a skosh taller than the rest of the tub. It, is that an optical illusion or is it truly taller? It's an optical illusion. The, the top extends down over the bed top lip. Oh. So this is actually exactly the same height as the bed top lip. Yeah. So if the top was off, which it would, it would be guys, even. like literally these pictures came two days ago, okay? Yeah. So we're, we're in the, pro like I'm trying to leak this stuff out to you as fast as yeah. possible, but we, 
but trust me, my Jeep will probably never have a top on it. So it'll, it'll always be this way. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, let's see. Sam says, grab your pop car and I bet you get a great answer to your question. <laughs> uh, let's see. I haven't even had any Rockstar to drink today. I'm you were kind of fired up. I you am fired been, up. You must have been talking to people while you were sitting I was, on the freeway. I was, I was, <laughs> yes. I, by the way, I just came back while Debbie's looking for the next thing. I just came back from JE Real where I saw this U-joint sitting on his uh, workbench. And I go, hey, can I have that? Like, I got to show our viewers like this, that this thing melted down. So here's what happened. There's a good story behind this. This was out of a race car. And the guy over tightened. You know how we run the, the U-bolt style straps or, or U-bolt um, to hold it onto the yoke? Well, those can be easily over tightened. So what happened was is the guy who installed it over tightened it, took off. Well, sure enough, bearings couldn't turn and you had some welding going on. So, yeah, kind of cool. And you can see this, this one's jacked up too. The, the needle bearings are spitting out. And you can actually see the dent in the cap. A lot of the times, the caps will crack. So, um, yeah, just a, a good example of don't over-tighten. All right, what else you got? Uh, Dwayne White, has Genride ever tried the Hutchinson Rock Monster DOT-approved beadlocks? I have. Um, the only reason I don't run those is they are heavy, 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 heavy. Um, so... You know, as you guys know, if you've watched the show before, um, this, is, this is a typical cast wheel, like 45 pounds. The wheels I run are 25 pounds, they're a forge wheel. So I'm looking to go less, less, less. A Hutchinson's like 75 pounds. I mean, they're super, super heavy. Um, the other reason is, is um, with a, a nice manufactured beadlock wheel, what they do is they turn in a spot right here on the rim where the back bead locks in. See a little better? So this, this locks in underneath this little lip that's right here. And uh, that's, that's one of the... So when bead locks first came out, everybody was converting wheels. Well, those wheels weren't designed to be bead lock wheels, right? So now Walker Evans, KMC, Trail Ready, you know, all these guys, um, these are all manufactured bead locks. So um, that's how that locks in. Uh, with that, you don't really need the double bead lock. Um, I know that, look, there, there are some tires and brands out there that don't have as close tolerance as, say, a Goodyear, a BFG, a Mickey Thompson. So they don't fit the rim as tightly. And those tend to fall off. I, I know a couple of buddies with, uh, I'm not going to mention the brands, but those tires, you air them down and they just seem to fall off the wheel. So... Um, just, just be mindful, you know, the buying the newer tires, um, and, and the big name brands, their tolerances are much closer and the tires don't have a tro trouble. VB Tom, what's the purpose of an inner liner? So an inner liner, that's a, that's a great question too. So an inner liner, when, when you have that bottom bead in now, I'm wishing we had two beads cut out. Um, an inner liner fills this area to keep the inside bead from blowing off. Okay, now it makes installing the tire very difficult and you have to punch another hole in the wheel in order to air up the inner liner. Okay, so it's, the inner liner is literally made of material that looks like fire hose. So when it airs up, it just fills that void and uh, locks the tire in. Um, and it serves one more purpose. One more purpose is if you get a flat, it keeps the wheel off the trail, okay? So it just lifts it up enough off the rim that you can drive to the next pit or wherever you need to go to uh, get there. Yep. Austin Schroeder, why are most bead locks have only single side versus dual sided? Yeah, it's, it's really, that's all you need. Um, you know, the, like I was talking about with this extra lip, with the manufacturing of better tires, um, you just you really don't have trouble breaking that inner bead. It's only this outer one when you're turning and pushing the tire under or up against rocks. So um, the outside bead lock is really all you need. Yep. Even even for racing, that's all we use. 
Adam Fowles, will adding duct tape to the inside of the rim help prevent the tire from burping? <laughs> um, I've seen all kinds of tricks. One of my personal tricks is that I use hairspray. So um, it, hairspray, when it's wet, is like a lubricant, and when it dries, it's like glue. So if you spray hairspray on that back bead, trust me, when you go to get it off, you're going to be cussing, or whoever has to take it off is going to be cussing. Because that's what we use to glue our motorcycle grips on and stuff. Like, that stuff don't come off. What else you got? Sam Walker wants to know um, if we cut that um, rim in half because it wasn't a KMC. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, this was a leftover wheel. I don't know where. It was like the last one I had. And um, I knew this is what we needed to do to better, dip. you know, after I watched the other video where I was turning around trying to show people, this is a much better example of an easier way to do it. What else? Jer Jeremy Balke says he'll be on the list when the JK doors are ready. Excellent. Good to know. Good to know. Me too. Uh, and so does Kevin Hudson. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's see. Um, Leaf Baron, same superior quality for TJ half doors in the future? Um, so we, we offer a TJ half door now. Um, it, it, if you haven't seen it, it's nice. It has a extruded aluminum piece welded on the inside. Um, we make bags that go inside of them. They take our armrests. They're, they're nice. So, um, you know, check that out and see, see what you think. Yep. Jeff's got him on his Jeep. And Jamie's going to have him on the growler here pretty quick. Uh, Mike Stewart. Uh, hey, Tony, we need two-door JK everything, LOL. Just don't forget about us two-door guys when you start creating new stuff. Okay. So for you two-door guys, you, you probably have not noticed that if you go over on our website, that blue bar, go over to where it says gallery, go to JK, go all the way to the bottom of the two-door, uh, the bottom of the JK gallery. I just posted build pictures of a stretch two-door that's silver. Uh, take a look at those. Um, I think you will like what you see. There's a lot of information there. And then uh, follow that up with a phone call. We, we still have a lot of two-door stuff available, so... Um, I, I think people just aren't talking about it, aren't seeing it. It's, it's there. So yeah, they're not as common. Yep. Uh, Craig Mal Malmquist, how is the JLUR cage coming? It's coming along. It's, uh, it looks very similar to the cage that we offer for the four door JK. And, um, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, is that if you, really wanted a cage right now, you could actually get a four-door JK cage and make it fit your JL. It's that close. It's just the floor mounts that have changed. So, uh, Greg Mina, great looking frame. Can't wait to see this for the upcoming 392 V8. That's the next one we're building. So we're gonna finish mine, which has the stock 3.6 liter gas engine, transmission and transfer case. We start with a Rubicon, so, but the next one is a Rubicon 392. Dan Hart asked if you plan to engineer anything for the Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I, I just don't have time. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I, we're, we get asked all the time for stuff for pickup trucks and Toyotas, and uh, we're, we're just, Jeeps is our specialty, and um, I'm pretty happy sticking with that and, and serving those customers being loyal. So thanks for asking though. Uh, looks like Val suggested on that one gentleman with the battery question yeah. that uh, dual Odyssey batteries might be a, an excellent fit for him. They, uh, if you know your cold cranking amps, we can point you in the right direction. Yes, yes. And we're going we're gonna to talk about Odyssey batteries here in a second. Do we have any more beadlock questions? Uh, I have a couple more things I want to say about beadlocks. Uh, I don't see any more. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> last Tuesday when we talked, we talked about how to tighten the bolts. So I want to go over that one more time. I want you to thread this in three turns by hand, every single bolt. Okay. With grease or anti-seize on the threads. Then 
You can use a socket, a motorized version, whatever you want to push these down, right? You're, you're just gonna blip them down a little bit. And we're just talking a little bit, okay? I don't want you just ramming this thing in. You gotta do this very evenly, and I really want you to do it across. I want you to work all the way across, okay? Then, when you're done with that, I want you to put that same socket on your torque wrench, set to the rating uh, with from your wheel manufacturer. It's typically 15 to 18 pounds, and I want you to torque each one. Now, it's really important that you're gonna torque in that same kind of pattern, okay? You're gonna go back and forth, back and forth, because you wanna torque it all evenly. Now, it's gonna take more than one time to go around. You're probably gonna have to go around three or four times. So just like we talked about in Tuesday's Tech Talk, this process, be prepared to spend an hour per wheel. So by the time you go to push the tire on, get the bead lock on, put all the bolts in, get it all torqued, it's probably close to an hour per wheel, okay? So do not be in a hurry. This is, you know, the stability of your vehicle, okay? And uh, if the tire comes off for some reason, you're gonna be in trouble. So you really wanna take your time here and get it right. Like I say, you're gonna have to do this, even though you cranked this to 15, um, just because you did it once does not mean that it's tight. So you're gonna have to go around and around several times until it finally clicks as soon as you torque it, okay? Now, the other thing we talked about was, is there a gap, right? So in this case, let's tighten this up. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. So when you install your bead lock, this gap should close. Okay, that means that you are sufficiently clamping the bead of the tire. Okay, so now keep in mind inside here, you can see that little silver thing right there. That is a steel cord. Okay, so it's, it's captured by rubber and you're smashing this together in this groove, but you can see there's no gap, okay? That's what's important. If this gets to 15 pounds and you still have a gap, you need to get the, the spacer, okay? And the spacer's only about uh, eighth or three sixteenths thick, it's not very thick. And uh, then you put that in and go through the process again to get it right, okay? So that, uh, that was the part that I wanted to clarify and the one other thing that uh, I saw a uh, comment on was um, the valve stem. The, uh, before you go to, to do anything on your wheel as far as taking it apart, you need to pull the valve core. Okay, that takes a special tool. You just take that out and then that'll let the air out of the tires. Any other questions on bead locks or I'll move on? Um... Yeah, there's a lot of questions. They just um, keep them firing away. I, I just need to just keep, because they're Jamie, not maybe you can chime in. Um, Anthony Paquet, have talked to Andrew about a rolling chassis for my 2011 JKU. Are you thinking about building a frame for the JK like you did for the JL? Sorry if this was answered previously. I stepped away. Yeah, no, no, ne not necessary to apologize. Um, we, we, like I said before, we have plans for lots of things, but until I finish the JL and JT stuff, which the JT is getting a whole new frame as well, um, will we then go back to work on more stuff for the JK? Um, we have a complete line of JK stuff, all of which I raced at King of the Hammers and finished in the unlimited class. So what we currently offer is perfectly great. All right, keep going. Frederico Borda, T Tony, what's your take on the ATX slabs, please? Um, I, you know, the wheels are literally um, a matter of, do they offer the right bolt pattern that you want, the right wheel offset? And by the way, when we talk about backspace, this is it right here, you know, from the, the back of the wheel to the mounting surface, that's your backspacing. So, 
Um, slabs are only offered in a, like two different wheel offsets. So it's very limited um, and it's quite a bit of offset. It's, it's like this wheel. I think this was a, a three or a three and a half inch offset. So now we're using like four and a half and five inch backspace. So um, the slab just wouldn't be something we could use. But the, the design, the way it clamps, everything about the slab is exactly the same as the machete, which is exactly the same as, you know, all the different KMC models. So um, yeah, it's, it's fine. Ben Bauer, did you cover tubes in beadlocks instead of a spare tire? Skid steer tube still have the spare on the trailer. Um, we, we didn't cover that. All we talked about was the inner liner, um, which is similar, right? An inner tube is actually just a full on. Uh, but I think what, what Ben's talking about, he's a, a former world-class enduro racer, which is awesome, um, is if you say you really damage a tire, you can pop this beadlock ring, ring off, pull the tire up, and shove in an inner tube and then air it up um, that would get you off the trail, right? It's, it's not a permanent fix. You're not gonna wanna run that on the highway. That is, uh, I've ripped the side out of my tire and I'm gonna do something to get me off the trail. So I think that's what he's talking about. And then that is, you just need to go get an inner tube that'll fit inside your tire and uh, then you're good to go. Yep. Uh, Steven Horsch, are beadlocks okay on the street for a daily driver or the highway? They are. So what, where beadlocks got a bad rap was in the old days when either people were converting regular wheels themselves or um, there were some aftermarket companies doing it, but um, it was very inconsistent. Today, like this Walker Evans wheel, these are what's called a manufactured beadlock. So whether it's a KMC or a Trail Ready, the, these were never made as a regular wheel. They were only made as a beadlock wheel. So they've got all the right thicknesses and everything in here. And um, that's what allows these wheels to work so good. When they did that, they improved the amount of threads. They improved the number of bolts. You know, there was a whole bunch of things done. And, uh, you know, like myself, I've run beadlocks on the road for 21 years. So um, they're, they're fine. And, um, you know, we talked yesterday about, you know, if, if you don't get the right spacing here, you can torque these bolts so you can keep tightening them till the bolt starts to bend. Well, a grade A bolt doesn't want to bend, it just breaks, okay? So, um, you know, if you do that enough, then uh, they'll break. So um, we talked about the ARP bolts. These are, you know, on a, on a grade scale, they're like a grade 12 or 15. They're way, way, way over, and these are tough. This, you buy these, you're, you're, these are the last bolts you buy for beadlocks. They're super, super tough. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a good way to go. They're, they're not gonna come loose. We talked about it yesterday. Check them a few times, at least three times. And um, if they haven't come loose, then the only other time, um, you know, you need to be worried about them is if you've been out scraping them on stuff, you know, pushing them up against rocks and stuff. Remember, the one side of your vehicle tightens the bolts, the other side of your vehicle loosens the bolts. Or if you're spinning the tires backwards, it's just the opposite. So, you know, if you've been in those situations where you were pinched or you know you were rubbing to get up something, um, then you're gonna wanna check those bolts for sure. Uh, James Goldman, do you run hub centric on your JKU? And also, are you running a half stud with 60 degree taper or a 5.8 stud with 45 degree taper? Ah, uh, good question. Uh, very good question. So, I always run hub centric, yes. And um, on the Terra Moto, I've got 5.8 studs with the, the cone shaped lugs, like you're talking about. In fact, I, Alex, I think they're right on the rocker right there. And um, then on most of our builds, we just run the half inch stud again, also um, hub centric. So uh, let's see. I don't know if you can see that very well, Alex. But that's the, the lug nut and it's got the chamfer on the back. So that sits inside a matching chamfer on the wheel. But when you order your wheels, you have to know 
this is what you're doing. You know, what size lugs you're gonna run, what, size, what the nuts look like. And there's actually an order form that you have to fill out to get all that stuff. Otherwise, if you order a normal wheel, then you'd run a standard lug nut, uh, half inch, so, yep. And uh, oh, back to the guy with the question about on the street. Um, I wanna remind everybody that I, I do not recommend over 25 pounds, even on the street. You know, these are big tires and you don't need that much air pressure. If you've ever noticed, I don't know how big of a tire you're running, but typically by the time you get to about 15 or 20 pounds, the tire looks fully inflated. Well, it's because you've got so much mass that um, it easily lifts the vehicle up. So that's why, yep. Uh, Greg Mina, can't wait for the JK half doors to come out, JKU half doors to come out. Um, Caleb Forbes on the Terramoto, how did Tony wire up the, win the winter's shifter to paddle shifter? Ah, that was, uh, that was done a long time ago. Um, and we, we had a, a separate module. So um, there was a switch on the dash that you, that you switched from uh, the, the winter's or gate shifter. Um, what you did was you just put that in drive, then you flicked a switch, and then everything became available on the paddle shift. Um, my complaint about that was is that there was still a little bit of a delay. Could you learn to deal with the delay? You probably could, but um, that it was there. There was a whole nother computer module to run all that stuff, and I wanted simplicity, so I just ditched it and just went to a full manual valve body. Good Rob, question. Rob Johnson asked what the new half door, the JL half doors look like on the inside. Oh, on the inside, I, I posted, I think I posted some pictures of those. If not, I can post some right after this. Um, we took them. Yeah, I'll just post it something on Instagram. Okay. That shows the inside. Okay. Um, yeah, we've actually, I think the, I, we, let me go back. There's, uh, there's two ribs inside here. And um, the ribs also have rib nuts put in them so that they will accept our door bags just like we do on the, the JK. So um, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple on the inside and the door bag really gives you a ton of storage. Um, and it does not take up as much space on the interior as the factory door. The factory doors are quite thick. So, you know, that takes up a lot of space on the interior. What else you got? I don't understand this question. Um... Melandlin Contreras, any gas tanks for TJ for the back of the, oh, back seats. Yeah. For the back of the back seats. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go over to our website. In the search box, type BST. And every gas tank we offer to the, what we call, that's called a behind the seat tank. That's why it's BST. And um, you will see uh, several options for uh, that gas tank. And um, those are made to take your factory fuel pump module. Um, sometimes they need to be extended. We sell a little extender kit, um, but it's got the fuel cap and everything on there. Those can also be made to remote fill um, quite easily. So um, yeah, made those for 15 years, so. Justin Andrew, how about tire balancing beads versus typical wheel weights? I, I like the beads better. Um, you know, the wheel weights are way in here and you have to put a lot of them on to affect the large diameters that we run. So the, the balance beads typically do a pretty good job. I mean, we run those on our RV even, you know, it's, that's, that's been pretty common. So when you go to take it apart, it's kind of a mess to clean up, but it looks like sand in there, but whatever. Frederico Borda, Tony, what's your take on ATX slabs bead locks? And also what brand is the uh, grease you use on the ring locks? Ah, so um, you can use any Molly or um, synthetic style grease. This is, this is a convenient one that you know, we pick up from uh, Torco. So um, that's nice. And um, I also have grease like in little tubes like this, you know, that it's, that it's easy just to unscrew the top and dip the bolt in. Um, this one has a little, um, I just, look, just out of uh, ease, I find stuff that's real easy like this so that um, it doesn't make a big mess. In the shop, we've got molly grease tubs that we put a brush in 
and then uh, you just brush the grease on the threads when we're doing you know massive amounts of wheels like before KOH. So um, all that's possible, but but good question. Yep. And uh, I think the other question was about the slab. So the the slab is also only available in certain wheel offsets and certain bolt patterns. So slab is a fine wheel. It's the same as the machete and the, the other KMC wheels that are available. Um, so it's just a matter of does it come in the offset that you want and do you like the style? But, but functionally, it's a great wheel. Brett Behrens um, mentioned somebody on Tuesday mentioned anti-seize and grease affects torque value in the comments. It does. Should some value be used with or without? That, that's, a, that's a good question. You can actually go on Google and uh, look for torque specs, right? These are 5 16 18 bolts. And if you look for torque specs with grease, you'll see a whole different chart pop up, or it'll be a chart that has both. It'll tell you dry or greased. So, um, yeah, it's, it's super easy to find. If for some reason you have trouble finding that, just shoot me a, a, a DM and I, I can find that for you. What else you got? Lots of questions. Debbie's sitting there through. There is. I'm just. That's great. I'm. I'm glad everybody's. You know, we we haven't even gotten to the batteries yet. Uh, Brett Harrison, what's your take on the sectioned beadlock rings, like Trail Gear beadlocks? Um, well, okay, so that's just the ring, um, and look, the I, I think it's fine. Um, the reality is, the bolts are what's doing the work. And um, that just gives them a different look. You know, from a marketing perspective, they were trying to go with something that made it look a little more unique. Um, so I give them credit for trying. I, you know, it's, I showed you guys, this is what I run. And um, this, this is a wider ring. The bolts are recessed. And these have the windows that let the stuff come out. So those are important features to me because I don't want water, sand, mud building up inside my wheel. I want that stuff to blow out. You know, centrifugal force just makes that stuff blow right out of there. So, yep. Uh, Jeremy Balky, which wheels are going on Aftershock? There are so many options from KMC and Fuel. Uh, you're going to have to wait and see, but I can <laughs> tell you they're forged and they're colorful. So I think we're going to, I was going to talk to Jamie about building a gallery page on our website tomorrow for the Aftershock and we will start posting build pictures of where it's at. So I think that's a good idea. Uh, Eat Mud asked, what's your opinion on the duct tape, duct tape trick? Well, it's, it's better than nothing, you know, so, um, you know, the, the rim's got to be super clean and dry and it's got to be good quality duct tape, you know. I, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen all kinds of stuff. I've seen uh, banana peels and sawdust stuffed in a differential to make a locker too, so. Justin Andrew, I have Walker Evan beadlocks with the standard ring and the bolt heads that sit above the ring itself. Just like this is one. It, is it better to get a ring that allows the bolt to recess flat inside the ring or acceptable to have the head protection domes by OMF, for example? Or yeah. do I not worry about it? No, no, that's a great question. Um, I can tell you that when I ran these wheels, um, not only did we damage the bolts, uh, but when they came loose, it would push the threads. So, you know, having the bolts recessed is, is a good idea. I really like the thicker OMF beadlock rings that you can buy. And I know Andrew put them on his and they look really nice. They've got the uh, evacuation rings too. Um, so, you know, um, I, I, OMF makes a great product. Tim out there is super nice. And uh, yeah, you just tell him what you got and he's happy to make up some rings for you. And you'll, you'll just find the, the wheel lasts longer. By the way, one of my favorite things about a beadlock ring or rim wheel is that you can wheel it for years and when that ring gets crappy enough looking you can throw it away and put a brand new one on and it looks like you just put brand new wheels on your rig 
because the ring is what takes all the beating and the rest of it looks perfect. So um, just keep that in mind for whatever it is, 45 bucks a wheel, you can make your, make your Jeep look brand new. So John Miller asked if there are any safety wire requirements for beadlocks in racing. Nope. Nope. They figure if you're dumb enough not to tighten the ring, you get what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jeremy Bulky asked, is Jen Wright going to be at the off-road swap meet in Lasertown the first weekend in March? I don't know. I, that's like light years away from me right now. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm going to Easter Jeep, which is way beyond the <laughs> month past that. So. Uh, Kelly Sims made the comment, no need for paddle shifters. There you go. He's running the same thing I am. Full uh, manual. <laughs> Tom Christensen, how much horsepower to the wheels is Terramoto pushing? I think the last time we dined it, it was right at 500 at the wheels. Yep. And that's more than enough. Brian Smith from Minnesota wants to go ice fishing with you. Cool. Oh. Never been. <laughs> no, he it? said he's ice fishing with Tony and Jen Ray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I thought he meant he wants to go ice fishing with you. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but he's watching it, he's right? He's watching nice. it while nice. he's ice fishing. Awesome. I hope you catch I know we, you Brian. know, honestly, guys and gals, I'm so impressed uh, for the reach we have. People all over the world, you know, they're watching from Australia and all over so it's it's awesome israel i've seen all kinds of different places so appreciate that uh steed flint with the curry axles you sell in house i like the fact they come with the auburn e-lockers can they be made to order with 4.88 gear ratio instead of what's posted on the website of 5.38 yes anything is possible you can have any gear ratio any locker anything however that is you <laughs> Like, it's like pouring molasses into the, the works. Um, that, I, I can't even begin to tell you what the lead time would be. Um, here's the situation, guys. Every manufacturer out there, I don't care what they make, is struggling. Getting raw materials, getting bearings, getting whatever, gears, like you, you name it. It's very, very hard to come by right now. So, um, the axles that we're getting in right now from Curry, I ordered a year ago, okay? So the, we're, we're, we thought way ahead, right? I Basically, I just went to Curry and bought everything they could make. So, you know, we're, we're pulling this stuff in. So when I call them and say, oh yeah, by the way, I'd like to get a set like this. They're like, sure, back of the line, you know, like, so yeah, anything's possible, but I just want you to have a realistic expectation of what that looks like. Uh, Jeff Perkins asked if you could explain at one at what point in your build stage should you go to a beadlock versus a standard wheel? Um, that's a good question. Uh, if you've got hydraulic assist or ram assist steering, you better have a beadlock. You're going to push that tire off the rim. If you're doing slow speed um, rock crawling, mudding, snow wheeling, where you're lowering the tire pressure and you need a lot of uh, footprint, float, flotation, um, you're gonna need a beadlock. Um, and, and remember what I said just a minute ago, by getting a beadlock, you know, you've, you've protected the outside of the rim and you're protecting a portion of the tire, okay? So as you're scraping against stuff and banging off stuff out wheeling, well, this ring, throw it away, put a brand new one on, it looks like new. If you have a regular wheel and you're out there scraping it on stuff, that's just grinding away the actual rim that's holding the tire on. Remember, like I showed you back here, under air pressure. So um, there's nothing wrong with beadlocks. I, I highly recommend them. If, if off-roading is your thing, spend the money, do it right. You'll never look back, trust me. What else you got? VB Tom, where can I get an inner tube for a 37 inch tire? Uh, most of the time what uh, people tell me they end up doing is getting them for a tractor. And you wanna make sure that you get one with a long uh, valve stem on it because you're gonna need to pop this out and poke it through there. So um, just be mindful of that too. 
Casey Sargent, what do you recommend for balancing beads? How do you, um, it's a typo and I'm not sure what, he, what word he's trying to use. How sure. do you, how, oh no, how many to use? Ah, uh, that's a good question. The, the people that sell the beads can, uh, they have a little um, chart that tell you based on the tire size and everything, how many you should put in. Um, it's not a big deal to put too many because they just even out right where they need to. So, um, but you know, obviously you don't want to fill half the tire with these things, right? Um, so yeah, there, there is a, a compromise there, but the people that sell the product have a, a chart for you. Corey Lone Wolf Picard, do you offer a dual Odyssey battery setup for a JKU to go under the rear seat? Oh, <laughs> no, I, I offer this one. <laughs> Um, are we ready to go to that? Is there any more beadlock questions? Because uh, I'm ready yeah. to move on. I, that's fine. Go okay. ahead and move on. You can so, answer them offline if you need okay. to. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about batteries. So first off, not all batteries are created equally. I'm going to bring this over. And uh, I've been through the ringer with batteries, bought more than my fair share over the years. And um, Odyssey is one of two companies that is able to build batteries for Marine and the military, okay? And the other brand is one you've never even heard of, so I'm not even gonna mention it. So this is the well-known, readily available brand. Now this brand, Odyssey, comes in two different versions. There's an extreme and a performance. I just happened to grab two extremes. What, we're, what I was trying to show you here is the different sizes. So related to the question you just asked me, I have two of these under the back seats um, in the Terramoto because I used our seat mounts. And because this is an AGM battery, you can lay these on their sides, on their end, do whatever you want to do and uh, they, they work great. That, that has no bearing on the performance at all. So um, one of the things that I wanted to mention is, are, are we zoomed in? Yeah. So the Optima battery, which is the competition to the Odyssey, you've seen it before. It has looking silos on it, and those are spiral wound. Um, because this is a plate style, it has 15% more surface area. Surface area equates to cranking amps, okay? So the uh, Odyssey is a superior product for sure, okay? And um, it's, these types of batteries are really good. The, what they're not good at is if you drain them by accident. You leave a door open, you do something where overnight they sit, okay? Um, that is really bad for this style battery. It's bad for any battery, but almost terminal for these. Um, Odyssey makes a special charger that I happen to own. I've, in fact, I've got one. Is it right over there by the door? Um, that is made just to either bring one of these back to life or maintain them. Here we go. And this thing is cool because you plug it in and you just walk away. And uh, it, it shows you, it does a self-test and then it'll... It'll condition the battery. I mean, it's, it's really cool. And all the lights light up and it tells you where it's at in the charge cycle. So um, you just clip this baby on and you walk away and it's a, it's a fast charger. So it's pretty cool. So I would highly recommend that as well. Okay. Now, everybody wants more battery power, right? So you can go on Odyssey's website. You can type in the type of Jeep you have it'll tell you the recommended battery. So this is, this one applies to a group 34 or group 78, okay? So um, this, by the way, is one of the most common batteries in a Jeep. So it's about this size. Now they make some that are slightly bigger. This is a 1500, they make a 1700, a 1750, a 2150. There's, this is a 925, they just got a ton of them. So back to the dual battery question that the guy asked earlier. Yes, you can get two smaller batteries like this, mount them under the hood, 
down low, behind the seats, way in the back, you know, cut a hole in the floor, sink them down. The, the smaller the battery, the more capability you have. What I recommend is that you put these on a switch like I do, which is a big marine switch, so you can select battery one, battery two, or one and two, okay? So that way, for instance, what I do is my stereo system, my race radio, my GPS, a bunch of what I'm gonna call the non-essential stuff is attached to one battery. The starter is attached to a different battery. So if I kill that one because something got left on, no problem. You just switch to the other battery, start the Jeep, and then it recharges everything. Okay, so those are, those are super important. Now, all that said, you come to a company like this, like Genesis. Okay, so these guys, they make a kit that looks like this that does all that for you. Okay, so it's, this is called an isolator. And what it does is it isolates. So, so it always keeps the one on the starter. And if you kill the other one, it doesn't let that charge back and forth. So um, they've got it all figured out. It's all set up with the connectors on it and everything. You just put this on. Now this also comes with a battery tray. Right, so you can get it with the battery tray. And um, this particular setup right here is made so that, um, let me see if I can do this here. Because I think this battery fits in there. Okay. So you drop this dude in there, you put the, the lid on, right? And um, this setup is designed to be the second battery. So you've already got the one under the hood, no problem. This kit comes with all the cables and everything you need to run a second battery someplace else, in the back, whatever the deal is. Um, so this is, this is one style of kit, okay? So that's, that's really cool. Then Genesis makes an under hood dual battery kit as well. So um, yeah, there's, there's lots of combinations that you can do. In my Jeep, I run them down under the seats. I want my bat batteries. You just saw me lift this thing. They're heavy, okay? You want the weight as low as you can get it. That's not where the factory puts them, by the way. The factory puts them as high as they can get it. In fact, they practically mount it on the freaking roof. So, um, yeah. Do you have any questions related to this? Uh, yes. Uh, and there's several more beadlock questions, by the way. So okay. you I'll answer, answer those offline. post, yes. Uh, Jeremy Balky, what clamps does Genrite use for their battery and accessory connections? What clamps? Okay, so um, this is the most common, you know, like this. It's the, the standard. I don't even know. It's a, this is a soft metal. Um, it's made just for batteries. It's also tapered inside. I, I don't know. Okay. So, um, but it's tapered, right? So it matches that perfectly. So when you shove it down on there, you don't have to tighten it very much. But it's very important that these connections are tight. Um, the other thing I do is on a connection like this, I put a thin coat of dielectric grease, okay? And then I put that on there, and that way no corrosion occurs underneath there. That's super important, by the way, because as soon as it starts to create corrosion, you're not getting the amps and the voltage that you should be to operate your vehicle. What else you got? Uh, Mitch Moore, how does the weight of, of an Auto C battery compare to a conventional battery? Uh, same. Yeah, the, the only battery that's gonna be lighter is the lithium, which are, you know, these are, a battery like this is almost $300. A lithium in this size would be 600. And everybody that I know says, don't run them. They light your vehicle on fire, so. That'd be bad. I kind of gave up on that idea. Even uh, in the race car, we don't run them. Yeah. My, my guy that wires our race cars, he does like all kinds of race cars. He says, do not touch those. Jim Farmer, what about a trickle charger for storage, say for several months? Sure, yeah, I do the same thing on my Harley. I just have a little plug-in <laughs> thing and uh, it's a battery maintainer. Um, a friend of a friend makes a really good one. Um, if Bob Haffey's on, he knows the brand. He is on. Yeah, maybe Bob can say what brand that is, but it is the best. It has uh, good electronics and logic 
and it doesn't overcharge the battery. That's, that's usually the problem. But that the Bob Haffey's buddy is like the genius on this stuff. Okay. Uh, Heath Curry, what's the advantage of running a 24 volt system like Campbell runs in his rig? Ah, Heath, good to hear from you. Um, Campbell runs a 24 volt because he's running the giggle pin winch, which is a dual motor 24 volt system for high speed. So there is one other advantage that I'll tell you about, and I know the car manufacturers are considering this going to a 24 volt system because the wire can be half the size. Okay. So because the voltage is low, in order to carry the amperage, the wire has to be big. Okay. So you can literally cut the wire in half if you have twice the voltage. I'll bet a lot of people didn't know that. And by the way, um, it just like that Switch Pros unit we had last night, that bundle of wire, like even this is probably 10 pounds, right? So when you talk about trying to save weight in vehicles and you know being mind, mindful of that, you, know, you start taking copper out of the wire harness, you're saving a lot of weight. Um, Clint Lamru, do we carry, does Genrite carry the Odyssey chargers? Uh, I don't know if we have them on the site, but I can certainly add them to the site. Yeah. But we do carry them. I, I got, I got them. Okay. So, um, Brigida Hopkins, my Odyssey batteries ran, um, the last one over eight years with zero issues, even in sub zero temps and not running the Jeep except for fun trips. Yes. She loves them. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, batteries, you're, you're going to love this are made to operate from minus 40 to 176 degrees. That, that is their rated range of operation. Do you know what the temperature is underneath the hood in your car, your Jeep? Like 300, okay? So what happens is when you exceed that specified range, you're, you're just taking life out of the product, okay? So moving the batteries out of the engine compartment is probably the best thing you can do, okay? So like where they're in mine, is as low as possible. I guarantee you that never even sees over a hundred degrees. Okay. And these batteries, when you stay within the rated range and don't discharge them at zero, they'll last for 12 years is their rated, their, their range. So huge, huge. Most batteries in wet cell, like if you get five years out of them, you are lucky. They're good for like three most of the time. So yeah. Uh, John Miller asked, should we be buying our batteries from Genrite? It's, it's totally up to you guys. You know, batteries, um, I keep them in stock. So if you're having trouble finding them, um, but I know there's a lot of people who just sell batteries and they offer free shipping and a lot of other stuff. So don't, uh, don't feel obligated to buy them from us unless you can't find what you're looking for. And then we've got it. You know, I keep like a pallet of batteries here, so. Corey Lone Wolf Picard, is there a way to utilize that setup under the rear seats or would I have to make my own? So in the Terramoto, um, all I had to do, I've got our rear seat mount and um, I literally just had to make a, a brace out of angle iron that just went from, po you know, and when the battery's tipped on its side, it just holds the battery in place. It's exactly the right height. So it was a super easy install. Um, there's, there's even a little pocket in the floor where literally the battery fits perfect. And I'll, I'll post a couple pictures after this of what that looks like. Um, if you guys followed me last year when I was prepping the Jeep for King of the Hammers, I posted a bunch of pictures of the batteries back there. But, and I'm running way bigger batteries because I raced it. Because there's a lot of times where your alternator goes out and I knew that I might have to run on battery power only to get me to the next pit. Now keep in mind, the, I'm running a MoTeC system and it's really high tech. So what happens to the MoTeC is, is when it senses that your alternator is dying, it conserves power and it starts shutting stuff off. It gives the driver and co-driver a notice that that's what's happening. It allows us to switch or the system can switch the battery off so you can conserve one battery and then it'll switch over to the other battery um, when it knows it needs to. So. Um, but by the way, we've, we've tested this and my Jeep will run all the way down to eight volts. So it's, it's pretty interesting.
Uh, Bob Land vote. Do you run an upgraded alternator on your personal Jeep? Oh yeah, yeah. I run the best money you can buy. And if you want to know what that is, um, it's called DC. I think electronics or DC alternators. They're out in Riverside, California. A hundred percent billet, all the best bearings. It's what's on every high-end ultra four car and trophy truck. It, it is the shit, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, Bob just answered the question, battery tender automatic charger. That's the brand? That's what he said, okay. battery tender. Yeah. Automatic charger. Okay, so if, if there's a brand associated with that, great. Maybe I think Bob that's can. That's the brand. If it is, tender. then yeah. Apparently, the guy has made a zillion dollars on this because it has this special proprietary charge um, logic. Uh, if someone, this is Robert Winstell, if someone runs a dual battery setup, what is the minimum alternator output you want to run? So um, your your stock alternator will charge both batteries. Um, it'll it'll handle that. Most guys with Jeeps upgrade the alternator anyways. They get a mean green. They get a what's the one uh, Jeff has, Jamie or Alex? Do you know? He just told uh, me the name of it. Yeah, I Does it start with an M? Maybe Jeff's on Jeff's there. On um, they, they were super happy and helpful, and Jeff said their service was great. Um, so, uh, you know, there, there's definitely some out there, but you know, the, your alternator can't see that there's two batteries in the system. It just knows it's got to charge that. And by the way, many, many things that you buy want you to connect directly to the battery. You know why? Because your battery is in an electrical system, a filter. Okay. So if you tie into the alternator, you're going to get all kinds of noise, you know, zing and zing. Um, your battery filters that out. So it, it takes the power from the alternator, and then if you pull power from there, um, that's the filter, okay? I know I, I just learned that maybe two years ago when I was dealing with EFI systems because they want you to connect straight to the battery. They, they, they need it to filter all that power and noise. So what else you got? Okay, it's uh, oh, we're after. after. Oh, I think boy. we got to wrap it up. Wow. So, so many Time great flies. topics, man. I, I love it. I and love great, it. And great questions okay. again. Um, next Tuesday, I think um, I'm going to have the guy from Torco Oil on the show to talk about synthetics. And um, if for some reason he can't come, we've obviously got plenty of topics to still talk about. We'll probably even touch back on batteries since we only spent about 15 minutes on it. Um, so get your questions ready. Um, and I will go back and answer a bunch of these tonight after the show. So thank you all for joining us. I can't believe it's Thursday already. We will see you next Tuesday.